Over the years, some cars have become incredibly iconic. The Ford GT40, for instance, which won the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1966, putting an end to years of dominance by Ferrari. Or the DMC DeLorean, made famous as it was turned into a time machine in the movie Back to the Future. Some cars become legendary because of their blistering performance. Others, because of their place in popular culture. This car, however, is something different. This is a 1972 Opel Cadet B limousine. I have it on good authority that, uh, unlike most cars, He's a he, and it's called Pesto, because it's green. And he is green in more than one way too. This particular car runs on LPG, which is kinder to the environment than diesel or petrol and when modern cars might be way more efficient they also create a lot of pollution to build and ship this car has been around forever it has no rare metals in it or environmentally unfriendly iron lithium batteries so by driving one of those you're actually kinder to the environment than if you were driving a tesla of course you won't get the same performance as a Tesla. This has a 1.1 liter engine at the front, a four speed manual gearbox in the middle and the power goes to the back wheels. So it is essentially a drift car. When it was new, the engine produced a whopping 44 horsepower to carry around its 900 kilogram body. A friend of mine who's a mechanic told me that typically cars lose about one horsepower per year due to wear and tear. So if we do some quick math, we're in 2021, car was built in 1972, there would be 5. Hmm, that should be moving backwards, really. <laughs> The engine doesn't make for a particularly nice soundtrack either, especially when you compare it to some of the songs that were released in 1972 like Stevie Wonder's Superstition, Elton John's Rocket Man, or Neil Young's Heart of Gold. None of which I can play here because of the exorbitant licensing fees. Actually, it is quite noisy in here, but to be fair, that's nothing unusual for a car from this era. In fact, it prevents you from falling asleep or driving too many hours on end. The noise is a safety feature, really. And it may well be one of the only safety features of this car. Pesto is equipped with seat belts in the front, but here, in the Netherlands, those weren't even mandatory until 1975 in the front, and this is crazy, 1990 in the back. These are old school seat belts as well, and I suspect that they were designed to crush your ribcage in case of an accident and save the fire department the trouble of scraping you off the side of a tree. It's tidier this way, really. In terms of equipment, there's a heater, a one-speed set of windscreen wipers, and that's about it. Actually, the car was so bare-boned when it was sold that this little central console, where you can put your keys and your phone, not that they had phones back in the day, was an optional extra. It was just fitted in this car a few years ago. But the simplicity of the car is also in large part what makes its charm. There is no ABS or traction control or stability management system. The car is light, it has tiny wheels and skinny tires, which means that you can feel every gust of wind on the road and you have to adjust your driving accordingly. And the brakes are pretty good, but tough. There is no assistance from the car, so you really have to step on them if you want to have any chance to stop in time. 
And really, this is one of the main reasons why these old timers are so enjoyable to drive around, even nowadays. Granted, I would probably not drive across Europe in one of these, but on a country road like here, on a cloudy Sunday afternoon, this is quite a nice place to be. And one thing you notice driving a car like this around is that people slow down for you and smile. Other drivers even tend to give you a little bit more space to maneuver around. Probably because they think you're going to crash into them, but still, I appreciate the courtesy. It's great to see this type of old timers on the road, because they're all part of car history, from the sexiest Mustang to the most humble cadet. And it is heartwarming to know that there are numerous enthusiast clubs all around the world that are dedicated to maintaining these vehicles. I mean, look at Pesto. He looks like he just drove up the assembly. Here in the Netherlands, there is a classic car culture that I never expected to find. People who like to meet and show their cars or simply take the time to drive around and share their passion with others. Cars like Pesto are part of this culture. And with proper care and love, there is no reason why they can't be on the road forever. And I, for one, think that this is a beautiful thing.